So I think there's there's a couple of even scarier things going on. The first is that when we use an AI, uh, so I, I did a really fun experiment with a couple of friends of mine. We like streamed this thing where we basically gave the AI clinical cases. So it was me and, and two psychologist friends of mine. And we basically like, I, I wrote up like a clinical history, pulled some things from my notes and I put it into AI. So when I ask my friends, you know, what here's the clinical history, word for word, I read it aloud, I got their thoughts on it. And then I put it into the AI. And, and some, some situations, they were pretty close. But there were a couple of really great cases of, of uh, patients who were incredibly narcissistic, who were like, come in, will say, my daughter doesn't want to talk to me anymore. She does this and she does this. I try my best. I make sacrifices. I do this. I'm like, basically, she's like incredibly narcissistic, talks about how our daughter is the problem. So immediately the two therapists pick it up and they're like, this person sounds a little bit, I, I think this person is missing something. We're missing some part of the equation here. Whereas the AI is like, oh yeah, like sometimes this is hard. You've got empty nest syndrome. Sometimes kids aren't grateful to you. You're like, you're not doing anything wrong. It can be useful to like share with them how you feel, right? So the AI reflects back what you give it. So the AI, if you have a really strong cognitive bias, the AI will just reflect that back to you, which is why it feels so right.